by the grace of our Lord let us open our Bibles letter of calling letter to James letter of James We can read from chapter 3, the end of chapter 3 and all chapter 4. We're going to start from chapter 3 and verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him sow it by his good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you have a bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from from heaven, but is earthly and spiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, <coughs> then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something but you, but don't get it. You kill and, co and covet but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight you do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that the friendship of this world is hatred towards God? Anyone who chooses to be friends of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think the scriptures say without reason that the spirit has, he caused to live in us envies intensively in, intensely but he gives us more grace that is why the scripture says god op opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble submit yourself then to god resist the evil and he will flee from you come near to god and he will come near to you wash your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded grieve mourn and wail change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom humble yourself before the lord and he will lift you up brothers do not slander one another anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it when you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on businesses and make money. Why why you do not even know why do you don't even know what will happen tomorrow what is your life you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes instead you ought to say if it is the lord's will we live and do this or that as it is you boast and brag all such boasting is evil anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and does not do it sins amen of the word of God is this for us today it's not for someone who's passing outside someone who never knew the Lord but the Lord but the word of God is for us today and James is talking to the people of God and to the church of God and he is shocking in his ways whatever we just read uh, regarding you and I the characteristics and the specifications we just read are regarding you and I James is a bit too raw and realistic 
he's not explaining things like Apostle Paul who is um, uh, changing around things however James is staying in the truth and he is raw and natural because James knows who he is referring to he knows that he is referring to people that know Christ in his life in their lives he is not referring to babes of this world that are unable to walk he is not referring to people who are not able to walk even properly but he is referring to people men and wife men and women women of Christ that hey they have walked with Christ and Christ has worked in their lives and we do thank God for that what is the the reason why and the point made so that we can understand that James is speaking to those people and that is the way he starts as he uses only two as he just signed James 7 of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes uh, greetings that's all he's starting up with in in chapter 1 and verse 2 he starts off saying consider it pure joy my brothers whenever you face trials of many kinds and consider it pure joy not just be joyous but consider it the pure joy who is he who you gonna say this how is it possible for you to say these words to a person and for he and he won't come back to you saying that you're crazy but for the person who knows Christ and has experienced Christ this is not new words this is not something that are oxymoronic and that is why James says consider it pure joy my brothers whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know he continues on to say and this is where we understand that because you know and in other words he's speaking to you and I who know we know Christ in our lives that the testing he continues of your faith develops perseverance perseverance must finish its work and that is the uh, what James wants to get through to us he wants to help us to walk accordingly to a proper way of perseverance but a person cannot become perfect in front of God by sitting around a in the beds uh, sipping uh, sipping down smoothies let's say this is not how you perf make yourself perfect but you're becoming perfect through a specific work and uh, fight for us to be able James says for to, to finish that fight and work we have to have perseverance if I give to Christ my perseverance then he will be able to perform a work that will be perfect in my life and he will make me perfect in such a way that James will tell us later on in such a way that I won't be lacking anything and this is all just theory of course what God wants and being perfect in the, eye of the, the eyes of the world is the theory but James is practical person and we are gonna go ahead and read the verses and the chapters we've read before the beautiful thing about this um, letter is that we are able to finish to read it from end to the beginning and the beginning to the end now in the last therefore let us read it from end to the beginning in chapter in verse 14 why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow what is your life you're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes and this is who you are this is who we are do not forget that 
Whatever we say that, do not forget it. Do not forget it when you go out to continue your life. We are here today, but we are not. No one can promise us tomorrow. Because we are not able, our breath is lying in our body. And our breath is our life. And therefore, your philosophy has to be according to this fact. According to the fact that today we are, but we don't know what will happen tomorrow to us. Even though usually the person of God is going to tell us that our perspective is different than that. Because we as people make thoughts, we, we organize, and we are saying that we're going to do this or that. But because there's nothing owned that we own, there are only two options and two alternatives. Either to achieve the targets we make and we set and reach a point where and reach a point as we read in verse 16 as it is you boast and brag all such boasting is evil either therefore from the moment you set the targets in your life you have a result with methodology the proper methodology and punctuality you have a positive positive result and therefore you boast after that or even though you do set your targets you fail and wh what happens when you fail then the evil that comes to you is doubled not only are you put I are you standing against God because you weren't able to achieve your goals but you also look at the person next to you and because he, he, the Word of God is speaking to us today, you're looking at the person and your brother next to you who was able to achieve what the target he said, and you are jealous. Because he had the way, he had the talent, and he was able to do it. It is as if we were to say, Mom, please tell to the Lord, when he comes in his kingdom to allow us to sit one to his right and one to his left as we've read back in the gospel of matthew but the other side of the coin was that the other people were angry f for them and why is the why is the question and the answer to that is because everyone wanted the same but someone had the option to approach the Lord with such question but others didn't in other words but at the end this was bad for everyone therefore the point is not the way you're thinking and your methodology but rather it's what kind of the the role of Christ in your Christ is your life on your own hands or is your life put in God's hand in other words, therefore, we continue on to be, be jealous. Let us go to just a bit above. Brothers, do not slander one another, because we 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 have never learned to see what is of ours. We look around and we slander one another. And that is why in verse 11 it says, Brothers, do not slander one another. And we become judges as well. We become judges that are not good judges indeed because what we say is not 100% correct but rather has to do with the environment I mean but God comes down to say I am the lawgiver and the judge but you who are you to judge your neighbor do not forget you may be here today but you may be not be here tomorrow and that should be your mindset 
your environment should be under consideration and, uh, and regarding the fact that we are like a mist. Mist is not like the wind. Mist is kind of a water. Mist is liquid. Mist is the liquid element that depending with depending on the circumstances that are existing in its environment can become can become solid as ice and in environments of total of um of of free of freezing temperatures can become harder than rock the same water under normal circumstances has that kind of um is 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 moving as we know but under different circumstances of of scorching heat starts to evaporate and become mist and let us get an ex and understand an example because we are the mist and we are the liquid uh, substance of this earth we are the weak ones and we are the ones that are prone to change remember the person called Peter he said to the Lord wherever you go I will be with you I will follow you in a little while Peter the shepherd will be slain and the sheep will run away but Peter insist wherever you go I'll come with you and uh, it, one another starts to agree with it saying I will do the same and and another disciple might say the same after under different circumstances though in a little while the Peter denied his Lord he said I don't know what you're talking about and we're talking about the same person that is the liquidity of our character that is how easy it is for us to change our perspective not only according to the things of Christ but according to our brothers or even against the person who Christ put next to you and my reaction is would be to slander and judgment first your life is not of your own secondly there is only one law given judge and that is Christ let us never forget it we do thank God for that people say people back in the illumination age he described the the laws and the way they are derived and set apart in this earth but the person of the Lord knows that there's only one authority and comes from one person from one and from one from only one and that is God and we do thank God for that let us go now to meet wisdom w wisdom what what is wisdom practically as we if we follow the flow of our speech is the way you are handling your life James will try to help us understand what is to our difficult uh, good for our edification not according to theories but according to the results of our actions he's gonna show to us what happens on one side and what happens on the other and from the results he will help us understand there's a special category talking about wisdom there's a category that he that James will point out in his first chapter and in verse 5 if any of you lacks wisdom 
he should ask God. That's the first occasion. That's the occasion of some that someone might say that I'm I'm not having any wisdom. I don't know. I'm not able. Please help me. And that's the best situation. The best place you can take if you don't if he doesn't feel adequate to take the proper decision that's your salvation your salvation's log therefore if you feel that way go to him who is the lawgiver and judge and he gives out generally gen generously to all without finding fault if therefore you want to go and you want to claim wisdom do not think of it for much go to the only one who can give generously to you but James in chapter 3 is going to speak to us about two different type of wisdoms there's a wisdom that comes from heaven and there's a wisdom that comes from below the earth and he will tell us not many of you should presume to be teachers my brothers because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly and in other words he who is wise and understanding among you let him sow it but his good life by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom as it says in chapter 3 and verse 13 therefore let us measure ourselves today and see where we're standing if we want to do it the first thing we have to take under consideration has to be about your good life do i have a good life do i have humility in my life Am I having good deeds? That's your entrance and that's your introduction. The first understanding of measuring yourself. If you don't have this, let us see what happens to you. Your wisdom, if you don't have humility in your life, and if you don't have patience in your life, perseverance, and if you refresh your memory and you see that there's a problem with the things you've said or the things you thought, if you find yourself in that road then I may need to take good I may need to see and understand that about my wisdom because it may be of this earth and what does it mean for you to have an earthly kind of wisdom and that means the world as we read in verse 15 such wisdom does not come from down from heaven but it is earthly and spiritual from of the devil now therefore what is your wisdom where is your wisdom founded is your wisdom found in the lord but is it founded on this earth is it earthly and in the ancient greek text it says that it uses a word that claims a selfish kind of a, of understanding or mindset unspiritual of the devil am i secure and sound in the presence of the lord or do i leave windows open or doors open so that the devil may be able to come in with his flaming arrows in your thought and that is very important because the word of God is for us today wisdom earthly wisdom this world in other words what can that practically mean for you someone may say how are you approaching your life the world outside has a, a way of approaching his desires when it comes to life 
the main criteria of my life it has to do with my desires it has to do with how many hours I will spend on vacations or days where am I gonna eat my luxury my enjoyment and entertainment and that is the world for us that's the approach the approach I have in life not my but in a different uh, and another approach in life could be how many likes I may have or followers I may have in my social media that's another way of thinking how many viewers am I gonna have on my YouTube channel how many followers am I have on my Instagram account and I'm waiting looking at my mobile phone constantly to see what I'm sending and what I'm receiving and that's my life this is my manager the social media on the other hand myself wisdom is earthly but is also unspiritual in other words unspiritual means that it's all about you and people from the US have a special saying saying that the first is everything and the second one is nothing first will take will claim everything and anyone else will claim nothing and that is the way the life is structured it is founded upon structures that are big without any meaning in desires and targets that for me to be able to achieve I'm putting on my mind and my wisdom to to work constantly but not according to what God commands me but according to what my logic is saying to me it's also unspiritual it's also of the devil how many times are we allowing the devil to intervene in our thoughts with his flaming arrows we are allowing the devil to allure us my friend you are you are th hungry you are you haven't eaten anything in for 40 days speak to these stones so that they may, be, may become bread who amongst us has the power in the midst of such affliction to say go behind me Satan because the man will not live from just bread but from any word that comes from God's mouth and we do thank the Lord how many windows are we are allowing and we are leaving open so that the enemy of our soul may, may throw his flaming arrows at us and then we go back to to accuse Christ why didn't you protect me we standing against our community our brothers our neighbors life is difficult because now I'm sitting at the end of the road but all by myself because I miss judge I miss my life is not as it should be but that's the truth the life outside of this church sometimes illuminates or sows the life inside of the church sometimes but James is also going to tell us that there's another different wisdom it's not earthly but it's from heaven and he is a spiritual wisdom and I want us to see it by the grace of our Lord before we see anything that James has to tell us let us go to Paul because he said it he's saying it nicely in uh, Corinthians Corinthians first in Corinthians first chapter 2 and verse 6 the word of the Lord is for us today and it's for you and I Corinthians first chapter 2 and verse 6 we do however speak a message of wisdom among the mature 
because God needs and wants the people that are mature but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing and w that wisdom that we read before the earthly and unspiritual comes and goes but the wisdom of no, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden, that God destined for a glory before time began. None of the rulers of these sides understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. What God can give to you today is a wisdom, in other words, a, a way of life, a way of thinking, a mindset that will be your steering wheel in life and that mindset will be founded on data that are not seen by eyes and our ear has not, has not heard nor mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him as the word of God says in verse 9 and that is for you and I do we love the Lord my dear brethren and that's the base of our life the base of our lives is the love of ours for God. Whatever happened in your life is because we replied to the love that Christ showed to us. We looked upon someone who loved us and we drew near. Because the person of God who is different has a different mindset and it is very important for us it is very bad for us brothers to be in the church and for our spirit to not be the spirit of the church but a spirit of this earth how bad it is for us and so for our soul how unfair it is for us for the spirit of ours to not be from the Holy Spirit but for our spirit to be of this earth f of logic and we are going to continue in verse 12 saying that we have not received the spirit of the world but the spirit wh who is from God that we may understand what God has freely given us that is the big gift from God if we look if I look towards God then I will be able to understand the persona of God I will be able to understand the way that God is thinking and he wants for the speech for the earthly person as we read in verse 14 the man without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned and this is where James in, is founding himself when he says that considering pu consider it pure joy when you find yourself in any troubles. Because what you understand now is something given from heaven that no one who doesn't have the Spirit of God can understand in, in a way that can then give him exaltation for God but he is drowned in his own thoughts how many times and let me speak about myself now how many times have i lost my direction i've i've lifted my eyes from the road that god has put in front of me and i've put my eyes inside of me in my thoughts and i was drowned by those thoughts and I was drowned by what I was understanding and my problems and the difficulties in my life while Christ was next to me he was ready to give me exactly what we're gonna read later on and that thing we're gonna read about it is the most important thing let us firstly though end up by saying the spiritual man makes judgment about all things but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of Christ as we leave this place here today we have to have the mind of Christ we have to be able to discern the work of God in our lives and James is going to tell us 
that there's a different wisdom a wisdom that is spiritual is the wisdom that has specific characteristics as we read in verse 17 and chapter 3 back in James the wisdom but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure then peace loving considerate submissive full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere whoever has those characteristics let him lift his hand that's the truth we lack these things who can have that boasting that boldness who can have that kind of wisdom therefore and because we don't have that kind of wisdom you know what happens if we go to ver to chapter 4 what causes fights and quarrels among you fights and quarrels among you and he James is talking about the church among us and don't say to yourself today that how or when or when did that happen there is jealousy also James gonna use you kill and covet in the church is that possible think consider that these that these verses follow the second and the third chapter of James that are speaking about the tongue a part of our body that is so small but so but can create so many difficulties and problems but James is gonna tell us that the tongue of the person is not controllable by me person and it is deadly and the ancient Greek text compares that to a virus I can murder and kill with my tongue that part of our body so powerful that I can make a person to, I can lift a person up to heavens and the next hour to make him fall down in Hades what is that gonna be taken care of or how can I fix that I'll have to see what I have in me what dwells in me do I have the things that we mentioned above do I have the good deeds what do I have the good life Do I have the humility as we read in verse uh, 13 and, ver and chapter 3 and then yes indeed all of those things will come out good things are gonna come out more or less we've understood that we are lacking things today all of us now James is gonna try to tell us practically how we can redirect and move forward and that is the message today he's gonna tell us therefore in uh, verse uh, 7 and chapter 4 he's gonna command us he's gonna make it so that it sounds like a commandment and he uses specific words submit yourselves submit yourselves then to God 8 come near to God wash your hands purify your hearts grieve mourn and wail and at the end humble yourselves before the Lord these are the musts of our lives let me repeat that he is not God is not speaking to babes but he is speaking to men and we men and women of faith in other words our mindset has to be the minds of a soldier our mindset has to be a mindset of a person who is ready to obey to the commandments of the Lord and he's gonna tell us submit yourselves that means sub means submit to God where you submit it to yourself deny yourselves 
if you want to submit yourself to God. Forget about your ego. Forget about your ID. Give your ID to God. Submit yourself to God. Come near to God. In other words, what comes next is that you need to draw near to God. I submit to someone. If by understand and the understanding is that I will ne what comes next is to come near to Him, wash your hands, make decisions. Washing means that I know how I go in front of Christ. That saying is, as I understand, taken from the way that the people of Israelites was uh, drawing near to God because they were washing their hands, all of them, before they were drawing near to God. Before they pray, they were washing their hands. How are you drawing near to God? What is God for you? And that is a good question. We are standing in front of Christ. We're not able to analyze this, unfortunately, maybe another time, but James tell us that you are asking and you're not receiving. Why? Because you're not asking properly. Because you ask with wrong motives. And sometimes you're not even asking, but when we, are, when we do ask why, and why we ask and what our motives are, and what is God in your life? Is is God just uh, someone who's going to serve you? Are you going to call him to your table to serve you what you asked for? Is he a delivery boy for you? What is God in your life? Some Someone said, some, a brother of ours said, not only I want Christ to be... Uh, someone who's going to serve me uh, but when w when we're putting money on the basket I'm, I'm putting money in so that he may be able to grant me what I want even faster because he thought that that way he's going to bring the blessings of Christ quicker to his life purify your hearts Purify your hearts, you're double-minded. In the first chapter, he's going to tell us, in verse 8, he is a double-minded man, unstable in all, he's, in all he does. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Has a specific destination. Have the commandment of God. Do not be quick to take action unless you're sure that what you're doing is from Christ grieve how how stable are we to take the decision of death grieve mourn and wail for that to happen to you you have to understand the, the reality and the reality of who you are the understanding of who you are next to the glory of Christ that will come next to you. Wail, mourn, and at the end, humble yourselves before the Lord. Stay. Do not forget that. that your life is not on your hands. It goes out like a mist. And the Lord is your judge, the Lord giver. against uh, in in front of him you humble yourself to and then at the end th there will be specific things that will happen in your life James is going to tell us first humble yourselves before the Lord submit yourself to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. If therefore I decide to be submitted to Christ, then there will be no pro there will be no process for devil to draw near to me. He will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. You will be near to God and I am near to God being near to God means that I have 
I am partaking in the presence of the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And finally, humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up. My life, my the evolution of my life, and the process, the walking of my life, who, what do I want it to be found upon? And who do I want to be the director of it? Myself? That's easy. That's what people usually do. But if I submit myself to to God, He will be glorified, and He who will be exalted in my life will be a Lord. I mean. 